Welcome to Victorious Life. These are your weekly announcements brought to you by the VLC Media Team. Attention VLC family and friends. The VLC Soup and Sock Ministry and the Snack Pack Ministry are joint forces to ask for new used coats in every size for the homeless. Please help us. Help the homeless to stay warm this winter. If you have any questions or would like to help this winter, please contact Assistant Pastor Charles and Assistant Pastor Carolyn Collier or Deacon Calvin and Sister Virginia Enlow. Please join us for our annual Easter egg hunt on Sunday, March 31st, immediately after 10 o'clock a.m. worship services. We are also taking donations for our Easter extravaganza with one carton of boiled eggs and bags of individually wrapped candy. All children are welcome to attend, ages 1 up to 15 years old. Get ready for TNT Tuesday Night Class Series in March. Go online to VLCKC.com for more details on classes. Sunday, March 31st, Easter, VLC Production, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Worship Service. The Married Couples Ministry is inviting everyone to stop by the Welcome Center on next Sunday, March 24th for their food fundraiser after church. Attention VLC ladies, the Women of Victory is inviting you to attend the Getting Through the Squeeze luncheon on Saturday, May 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. The cost is $25. Please register at VLCKC no later than Sunday, April 28th to confirm your attendance. Luncheon attire is yellow, white, and lime. Remember to bring a sister with you and we'll see you there. Want to improve your nutrition, physical activity, and better manage stress? Check out Reachin, a four-week program designed to help you and your family kick start healthy habits by offering health screenings, fitness classes, cooking demos, and more, including special activities for kids. Each week, you'll receive dinner and a recipe bag with all the ingredients needed to cook a meal at home. This program is sponsored by St. Luke's Health System in partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. To sign up, scan the QR code and submit your reservation today. Please hurry our next session starts on Tuesday, April 2nd, 5.30 p.m. The Dorothy Sorrells Food Pantry has new hours starting every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and on Sundays by appointment only. We still need volunteers to help serve the community. For more information, please contact Sister Anganet Alexander. Calling all new members or anyone interested in joining our church. Please join us for the series of new members classes at 9 o'clock a.m. in room 212, next door to Christian Education Classroom. For more information, please see instructors Deacon and Sister Enloe or contact the church office. To all of our visitors here in person or viewing us live stream, we want to thank you for spending time with us today. We pray that you experience the love of God and that something will be said to encourage you and your family to continue living a victorious life through Jesus Christ. Please come and visit us again at any of our services here at Victorious Life Church, where winners are developed. On behalf of our senior pastor, C.D. Collier, and our overseer, Bishop Mark C. Tolbert, we welcome you. These are your weekly announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is yours truly, uh, Pastor C.D. Collier, and I am excited about what God is going to say tonight through one of God's greatest generals, the Honorable Bishop Mark C. Talbert. The man has been in ministry for 40 plus years, and I just felt in my heart to take this time for the next eight Tuesdays to go down memory lane and hear the preaching and the powerful word of God through the Honorable Bishop Mark C. Talbert. Do me a favor, tell everybody, get on the live stream, throw a watch party, and let's have a Throwback Tuesday with Bishop Mark C. Talbert.
Somebody just lift your hands and tell him I, I, I surrender. I surrender. Lift your voice and say, I surrender all. Sing it like you really mean it. voice is an instrument. Open your mouth and say, I surrender. Come on, tell the Lord, I Open your mouth and worship him. Tell him I surrender God. I surrender God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father. The book of Joel. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. Find your Bibles. If somebody has a Bible that's near you that doesn't have your Bible, please share your Bible with them. A little bit more. Hallelujah. Joel chapter number one and verse number one through 19. The book of Joel chapter number one. We're going to start at verse number one and read through verse number 19. If you're physically able to stand and you're not holding a baby, please stand for the reading of God's word. Please read it with me out loud with understanding that we might hear what thus saith the Lord. Joel chapter 1, verse number 1. Let's read. The word of the Lord that came to, the, to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, shh, tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left 
hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare, cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, how, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished, the vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests, how ye ministers of the altar come lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and has a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clouds. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed, because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. Stop, bow your heads. Jesus, we need you today. Hmm. Oh For your word, Lord, is so evident that there is a breach that needs to be repaired. Send your word, God. Help us to hear as men and women of the spirit and not natural men and women. For in the natural we will reject you, but in the spirit we must open our minds and our ears and our spirits and say, me, Lord. Now, Father, have your way through this word. Speak to your people. Help us, God that we don't further walk away from thee, but that we will draw closer to you and we'll praise you and we'll honor you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. The word of the Lord came to me in this book of Joel as this alarm sounded. And the Lord said to me, tell the church reproach or revive. Touch somebody and tell them you're either going to reproach God or you're going to have a revival in God.
whenever there is something going on in the spirit realm, you always have multiple voices. You will hear the optimist who will say the crisis isn't going to last long. Be brave. You will have the pessimist who will sob and say it's going to get worse and there's no escape. We are doomed. You will have the alarmist who will see the enemy behind every tree. You will have the scoffers that will question and say, is that really God? And shrug their shoulders and say, what difference will it make anyway? But Joel, the prophet, speaks to the church. And God sent me to this area in Joel to speak because it is time for his church to wake up. And so when he said to me, reproach or revival, I said, God, what does it mean to be a reproach? To be a reproach means to bring shame or disgrace up on, to disgrace, to attribute blame to, to allege something disgraceful against, to charge with fault, to censure severely or contemptuously, to upbraid, to rebuke, to condemn, to revile, to vilify, the act of reproaching mingled with contempt, contemptuous or opprobrious language toward any person or toward the things of God. Touch your neighbor and say, I don't want to be a reproach. And so God said today, will you choose reproach or will you choose revival for your house? And so we must hear today beyond our natural ear and open up our spiritual ears to say, God, let me hear what the spirit would say to the church. And so he speaks first to the old men in verse number two. He says, hear ye this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? And now there is something that is going on in our day that God said we got to deal with. He says down in verse number four, that which the palmer worm have left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust has eaten hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. It seems like uh, there has been uh, 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 just a barrage of infested things that have eaten away at our lives. And sometimes we have the tendency to blame it on God. Lord have mercy. But God said, preach this word today because it's not just for a few. He said it's for everybody from the pulpit to the back door. He says, I have allowed your stuff to be eaten up. Every way you turn, your stuff just keeps getting eaten away, knocked down, beat down. When one storm got through, he said, I let another storm come. And God said, because we've been drunk on things. We have put things above God. So then in verse 5, he says, awake ye drunkards and weep and howl. And I said, God, what are we drunk on? He said, you've been drunk on stuff. You've been drunk on position. You've been drunk thinking that because you have done this, that, and the other, you are worthy, and why aren't I more blessed? And God said, instead of being humbled, to say, God, thank you for what I do have. Because all of my righteousness is like filthy rags before God. And so God says, instead of being filled with love, we have been filled with the joy of stuff. And stuff has pumped us up. And while we thought our stuff was a sign of faith, it was really a sign of God's grace. But we missed the sign. And so God said, wake up. Wake up, 
Shake your neighbor and say, wake up. When I looked in verse 7, he said, He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. And then he says in verse 8, Lament like a virgin who is sitting in sackcloth and ashes or sitting in sackcloth waiting for her husband of her youth. I said, God, what does that mean? He said, cry like a virgin on her wedding night who got married and in between the wedding and the reception her husband got killed. Can you even imagine that? You, you have left the wedding, headed to the reception and, and in between the wedding and the reception your husband or if it was a man, your wife got killed. You can't even imagine how hurt that would be. And so God said, wake up and cry like a new bride who found out her husband was killed between the wedding and the reception and never made it to the bride chamber to consummate the marriage. Then I looked down in verse number 12, he said, the vine is dried up. The fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree, and also the apple tree. All the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Now God said that these trees represent the things we are proud of. The palm tree, the pomegranate tree, the apple tree, they represent our stuff and our stuff gave us joy. And God said, the reason your joy is withered away is because you thought your stuff made you happy. And rather than seeking God for true joy, you kept seeking stuff and things and money and instead of getting happier, you found out your stuff has made you greedier. And the more we get, the less thankful we are. The more we get, the more we want. And God said, we have lost our joy expecting our stuff to give us joy. Expecting people to pat us on the back. And rather than pat us on the back, the more stuff we got, the more they hated us. The more Excel you went, the more they stabbed you in the back. The more you got, the less you prayed. The more you got, the less you trusted God. The closer you got to your earthly goals, the further we got from our heavenly Father. And so Job said in verse 16, is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. Now clearly there's nothing wrong with God's house. Because God said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He says, you lost your joy because you come to church uh, looking at others and rather than worshiping God for yourself and bringing the glory into the house with your worship. God says, and for that, your seed is rotten. The seed is rotten under their clouds. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is with it. I said, God, what are you saying to the church? He said, I'm telling you that your seed is rotten because your attitude is rotten. He said, no matter where you go, you can run from church to church, but if you take the same rotten attitude from this church to another church, your seed is contaminated. You give with a bad attitude, so your seed is rotten. That's why you haven't been able to get increase. You say, let me give this tithe so pastor can shut up. Hey, they ain't got nothing to do with me. They don't belong to me. They belong to God. So whatever you say against what you think is me, you're talking about God. And then he said, on top of that, your attitude is rotten because you've discouraged others from giving. 
Your seed is rotten. You've not invited anybody to the house of God to get saved in years because your seed is rotten. And God said, while you've been judging others, your seed is rotten. And until you repent, your rotten seed will produce rotten fruit. The tree will grow, the fruit will grow and you'll open it and it'll have worms in it. And so Joel said, he said, oh Lord, how do the beasts grow? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate in verse 18. I thought to myself, there were years when this church used to have shut-ins and all-night prayer meetings. Wasn't cause the pastor called them. People called him and said, Bishop, we want to pray all night. We want to gather a group. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I can't remember but once or twice in 25 years that anybody called me and said, I want to have an all-night prayer meeting. Blessed quietness, holy quietness is the truth anyhow. And God said, how do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. We don't understand what our prayer does. We don't understand what our consecration does to provide pasture and to provide a place for folks that are searching for the real power of God to come in and find pasture. He says, O Lord, to thee will I cry. Verse 19. For the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up. And the fire hath devoured the pastures of the field. God, it seemed like everything that used to happen good for us has burned up, dried up, shriveled up. Even the unsaved folks are crying out, God, was wrong? He said, but the problem is the church, instead of crying out to God, they're crying at God. Saying, God, where are you? Our stuff is going haywire. God, where are you? Our gas prices have gone up. Our milk prices have gone up. Our water prices have gone up. Everything is going up. And instead of us telling the world, Jesus is the answer, we're acting like we are scared of the world. But the world can only hear it from the church that Jesus is the answer. He said the church has got to, has got to tell the world the truth. So he took me over to Revelations 21 and 8. He says, tell the church, this is what they got to tell the world. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You don't hear church folks talk about that no more. Everybody want to tell you, oh, yeah, God loves everybody, and that's the truth. He loves everybody, but that's why he sends you to the house of the Lord to hear his word so that you can escape hell. He sends a Christian in your neighborhood, on your job, at the grocery store, so that they can bump into you and tell you about Jesus. But we talking about everything but Jesus. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Nobody wants to talk about hell, but it's going to be a whole lot of folks going there, including some of the saints if they don't wake up. The church has to wake up. We are the called out, blood-bought body of believers. We are the called out, blood-bought body of believers. We are the called out, blood-bought body of believers. Let me tell you something. There ain't no way none of us would be sitting in here on a Sunday morning if God didn't call us. 
See, here's, here's, here's how we get confused. The devil makes us think we have choices. Touch your neighbor and say, I didn't have a choice. God called me to be saved, and that's why I'm here. Oh yeah, every one of us in here got some stories about how we used to be out there shaking and quaking and doing our thing. But the reason you ain't out there now is cause God called you. Guess what? He didn't call you while you was out there. He called you before you got there, but you had to go that way to understand that when he got you in here, it's for a reason. Shake your neighbor and say, I'm called out blood ball and I believe God and so Joel continues to speak to the church and God brought me to this as we get prepared for this con consecration he says in, in chapter 2 verse 1 blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. Now, we used to hear every time we came to church, Jesus is coming. We were looking because we thought he was coming tomorrow. But guess what? He came for somebody yesterday. Somebody went to bed last night, didn't wake up this morning. Somebody's going into eternity today. So that is the day of the Lord for them. And tomorrow ain't promised to us. And so we have diluted the message because even in our minds, we're like, well, you know, they've been seeing Jesus coming for a hundred years. And he is. And he has. He just hadn't come in what we are looking for as the rapture. But every day that somebody leaves here and goes out of this earthly terra firma into eternity, that is the day of the Lord for them. And so that's why the church has to prepare folks for the day of the Lord for them. That's why we have to prepare us for the day of the Lord for us. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. Somebody shout repent. repent. Somebody shout repent. repent. You know what it means to repent? Repent means to feel pain sorrow or regret for what one has done in this body against God. Even not only against him, some things we have omitted to do for God. Repent means to change the mind, change the course of conduct, change uh, uh, what we do and, and how we are displeasing God. To be sorrow for sin as morally evil and seek forgiveness, cease to love, to participate in sin. Cease to love to participate in sin. Somebody shall repent. And so Joel goes on and speaks to us. Oh my God. Uh, he says in verse 3 in chapter 2, a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is a garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape. Shake your neighbor and say, it's too dark behind me. The Bible says, no man put his hand to the plow and go back. That's why some folks say, well, you know, them church folks, they hurt me, they made me mad, I'm disgusted, I'm going back out in the world. You can't go back. What do you mean, Bishop? I can do anything I want to do. No, you can't. Because look what he said. A fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. 
and behind them a desolate wilderness. You try to go back, you'll find nothing but desolation. You think you're going back to what you used to be? There's nothing back there. Down to Job 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Who can withstand the day of the Lord? Unless we are in the Lord with a repentant heart and a made up mind. <sighs> Don't miss this next move of God. Don't miss the move of God for your life, for your healing. Don't miss the move of God for the revival in your life. Don't miss the move of God for you to become that vessel of power and anointing that God has decreed you will be. Tell somebody say, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Don't miss God. Hey. Then he says down in verse 12, Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. That's why when people tell me, Bishop, you know when I pray, I just feel like I'm talking to myself. Because you don't know God. If you knew him, you'd know you ain't talking to yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, as we get ready to go into a time of fasting, uh, this is for everybody, leaders, preachers, pew members, young, middle-aged, senior citizens. God said, turn your hearts over to him. We have so much going on in our hearts, our minds, and our attitude. Sometimes we are stuck on being politically correct, but we miss God. Touch three people, tell them, don't miss God this time. Don't miss God. Don't miss God this time. And, 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 and let me serve notice on those super spiritual folks who, who, who say, uh, well, you know, I, I don't feel led to fast. Knock yourself out because I don't mind preaching another funeral. Amen. I've been preaching them for 25 years. This is not a choice fast. This is a fast called by God. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. It's consecration time. He said, I want the seed of affection in your heart. <sighs> God said, I want the seed of affection in your heart. What makes you happy? God said, whatever makes you happy, replace that with me. Whatever you'll fight over, he said, replace that with me. God said, replace anything over me with me. And I'll make your enemy your footstool. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. He says in Joel 2 and 13, rend your heart and not your garments. We, you know, the church has been so concerned with what people wear. I was so glad when I read that. Even back in the Old Testament, they talked about having the breastplate of righteousness and having the right garments and having the, uh, the bells on the, on the bottom of the priest's garment and all of that so they could hear him while he was in there uh, giving sacrifice before the Lord. And the Lord said here uh, real clearly, rend your heart. Don't worry about what garment you got on or taking your garment off or having on the right thing. He said, your heart is the most important thing to me. Yeah. Rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful. Here's what I like about it. He said, he's slow to anger. 
See, a lot of people, we count our own selves out because we say, you know, I know God is mad at me for what I did. God said, I'm slow to anger. He said, if you are in the process of making progress, all you got to do is keep on coming toward me and I'm going to come toward you. Lord have mercy. He says, rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Why is it that church folks can be so mean sometimes? when we serve a God that is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of evil. So many times in the Bible, people have been concerned about, not in the Bible, in the church, people have been concerned about stuff that didn't even matter to God. We've, we've made great things that matter to us and we made small things that mattered to God. Lord have mercy. Well, Bishop, I'm at church. Yeah, but you got a bad attitude. You ain't clap, you ain't smile, you ain't sing, you ain't waved your hand. God said, rend your heart. Tear your heart up with prayer. Tear your heart up with fasting. Tear your heart up with supplication. Stop worrying about other people and their situations and zero in on God. Hallelujah. Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repent of them of evil. For God is gracious and holy and full of love. Touch your neighbor and say, God is love. He said, rend your heart. Rend your heart. What does it mean? Repent before me. Give me everything thing that you can ever hope to be and when you put me first in your life I'll turn around and make something out of you see I think that we think that we serve God by choice shake your name and tell him you were drafted <laughs> you can't get out this army you play crazy if you want to. Oh yeah, I had a nephew. He walked around with a with a imaginary dog in the army. And he did it for about a year, trying to convince them he was crazy, so they put him out. But he was drafted. He said, you play crazy if you want to, but you ain't getting out of this army. And God has said, I called you, I died for you, I hung on the cross for you, I went to the grave for you, I got up on the third day for you. <laughs> Ring your hearts. Rend your heart. Repent before God. Cry out and tell God how sorry we are that we have ignored him. How sorry we are that we have not taken the time to consecrate our families and tell our children of the goodness of God that we have minored on the stuff that was concerned with God and we majored on the stuff that concerned about us. God, I'm sorry. God is so in love with us, he does not want to let the canker worm continue to devour us. But he said that, oh my God, that the palmer worm have left have the locust eaten. And that which the locust has left have the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left have the caterpillar eaten. That's a whole lot of devouring. 
and when he talks about lion's teeth, God is able to put lion's teeth in a canker worm. We looking for big objects when God said it's little stuff that's destroying us. Wake up. Awake ye drunkards. God called us drunkards. Because we drunk on stuff. Drunk on titles. Drunk on envy. Drunk on strife. Drunk on I got to pay them back for what they did to me. God said you're drunk. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to wake up and repent and cry before the Lord with all your might with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, and tell God, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. and say it's crying time. God's looking for a church that's not embarrassed to cry before him. God's looking for some men and women that will say, God, ah, we need you like never before. God, we are ashamed of ourselves because we thought we were blessed because of us and not giving you all of the credit. all over this building there's some folks need to just come fall on this altar there's some folks that need to cry on this altar Say, God, I don't want to be a reproach. God, I don't want my family to be destroyed. God, I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. God, I need you to be my God, to be my salvation, to be my sacrifice. God, I need you. Wow, wasn't that amazing? I'm sure some of you all probably saw some saints of old and people uh, that were once former members here and some faces uh, caused you to have some great memories. I tell you, this church has been in existence for 85 years. That's a long time. But thanks be unto God that he has kept his word when Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, I know you were blessed by the preach word of God through Bishop Mark C. Tauber, and I want you to do me a favor. I want you to sow a seed tonight if you can, as we normally ask people to do, at least $5, or maybe you can sow $10. If that word touched your heart, let God know you appreciate what his word did for you. You can scan that QR code and give by way of Cash App, dollar sign VLCKC, go to our Raise Mobile, and let God touch your heart. If you bless God's house, I'm a witness, he will bless your house. Listen, before we go, I wanna have a word of prayer with you uh, and ask for God to bless you right where you are. Father, I thank you right now for those that have viewed this message that you have sent, uh, even though we have gone back down memory lane, but your word is still yet alive in us. And what was preached back then still applies right now. So I pray that that mother, that father, that son, that daughter, that relative that has heard this word uh, will search within themselves and ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Uh, what, what do you want me to say? If there's someone who's watching and they have not received Christ in their lives, I pray that they will right now open up their hearts, ask God for forgiveness, and receive you in their heart right now. And I thank you for what you're gonna do in the lives of your people, in Jesus' name, amen. So listen, my brothers and my sisters, we'll be back next Tuesday, the same man, the same God, and the same rhema word that God would have for you. Tell everybody that you can. This is Throwback Tuesday with Bishop Mark C. Talbert. I love you to life, and I'll see you Sunday. God bless.